Oh man, crypto holders and investors, this week could be extremely painful. If you're not careful, you could be one of the 90 plus percent of people who will get wrecked this week. We've got a major FOMC meeting. We've got Bitcoin in a critical pattern. I'm going to break down exactly what I'm seeing in the charts, what I'm expecting from FOMC and how I'm going to avoid getting wrecked in the market. It's important to understand, guys, that when you're trading and investing, you need to know when to step in the market, when to step out the market. Okay, right? You could be the biggest, baddest boy in town, but when there's the next big mafia boss, you need to know when to step down and say, hang on, this market is volatile. I'm just going to be sitting on the sidelines for a while. I'm going to take some of the risk off the table. I'm not going to panic. So I'm just going to hold my line here because the reality is any influencer who's telling you they know the exact direction that Bitcoin's heading in is lying. And you guys know I will not do that here on this channel. I will share the TA I'm seeing. I will also share both sides of the equation. And right now you can see Bitcoin is in a very very important consolidation. Now we know statistically these patterns break to the upside and we know if this pattern breaks to the upside, Bitcoin will work its way up towards $93,000 and that will be my next big trade. You guys can join me using the links in the description to Bybit, to BitGet, to Mexi, the exchanges I use which support the channel and you can take this trade. But in order for us to do that, we've got to break this pattern to the top side, which we're not there yet. In fact, we've shown weakness. I mean, take a look at this pattern here. You had a high, you had a lower high, slightly about the same, and then boom. At this point, bears take control, right? Bears took control and said, you know what? We're not even letting you go to the top of the pattern because the normal pattern would have been something like this. He said, no, we're going to take some strength. And so now the bulls have to respond. And they've got until the bottom of this trend line, which is around that 61,000 level, to say enough is enough. RSI has reset enough. We need to step in. And when they step in, they need to start working this way into this direction. If they do so, the bullish continuation pattern is still valid. If, however, they're unable to do so, that is where this week can get really, really painful. And the macroeconomic catalyst we have this week, which includes some key macro data, plus the FOMC meeting with Jerome Powell, could be the deciding factor of whether we're able to rally to the top here or break to the downside. So I'm going to explain how the macros tie in with the TA. You know that fundamentally, since I started this channel, that's what I aim to do. And I'm sit here saying that all TA is going to tell you exactly what's going on. No, it's TA plus fundamental analysis, plus macroeconomics. If you don't have a good understanding of all three of those, you're going to struggle to trade and invest in this market. Now, you don't need to be a professor level, no, but you need to understand that I need to study all three of those. Without so, you have a hole in your armory. You need to be able to do so. So if we lose this pattern, guys, the worrying sign is the next support is down here. Yep, the green line at around that 50,000 level, which shows that if we were to tumble, all the way down to that 50k level. That's 18% spot, guys. 18% on Bitcoin. Trust me, that's going to be painful. That is when you're going to get that capitulation. That is when you're going to get people scared, fearful, selling their Bitcoin. And not necessarily the long-term holders. It's the short-term holders. It's people who are buying in at 50k plus when Bitcoin started pumping, right? Because Bitcoin started pumping. People thought they were very clever around this point, buying at 50, and they were enjoying it all the way up to 74. Now they're going to find themselves in the red. And those are the ones that are likely to panic sell. So hold up. Do you want to learn how to trade? Then you need to jump into our Telegram community. Link is in the description. In our Telegram community, I share my all coins. I share how I do my trade setups, how I do my stop losses and take profit. So you can learn to become a profitable trader. Check it out. Link is in the description. Be prepared for that. Are you prepared for an 18% pullback on Bitcoin? Because it's possible. That would bring you down to the next level of support. And in fact, if I bring out the weekly chart you can see 50k brings you down to just here where my cursor is in the middle of the weekly ema ribbon it's actually a decent pullback it's a nice solid pullback would present a good opportunity to buy the dip so for me i'm not concerned i just want to see this market make a decision either way because what i don't like as a trader and again if you guys want to trade with this community you can do so jazzcrypto.com forward slash tg it's the very first link in the description what i don't like is consolidation periods where there's consolidation it's hard to make money you need the market to be moving. You need the market to be giving you volatility to make money trading. Now, from an investment perspective, no worries. If it wants to consolidate here for another couple of weeks, I don't care. I'm not going to panic sell. If we fall lower, I'll buy the dip. If we break to the upside, great. I'll probably enter another trade up here towards that 92, 93,000 level. Quite simple, really, right? We don't need to complicate it. But how do we decide, you know, which direction are we heading into? Well, we need to understand the macroeconomics. And the first thing with the macroeconomics we need to study is the FOMC meeting. 
on Wednesday, May the 1st, Jerome Powell is going to come out and he's going to decide if we're going to get an interest rate hike, cut or pause. 98% of the market has decided that we're going to get a pause. Now, something really interesting has happened over the last 24 hours. When I checked this last, right, which was yesterday, this market, 98% expected a pause and 2% we're expecting a rate cut, which basically meant nobody. Well, now you've got 2% expecting a rate hike. Now, whilst that is really minor, 2% doesn't mean it's going to happen. In fact, the market doesn't expect it to happen, nor do I expect it to happen. But look at how the narrative is changing. And this is something I've pointed to for a while. And again, I know this is boring for some crypto investors. It's really boring because you want to talk about this meme coin, you want to talk about this 1000x. But the reality we need to understand right now is this market, when I'm talking about risk on, risk off, is risk off right now because they're worried that the economy is too healthy. And this is going to be the theme of Jerome Powell's press conference. When he delivers his press conference, because nobody cares about the interest rate decision, most expect him just to pause. Fine. When he comes into the press conference, will he be hawkish? I think he will be hawkish. The reason for that is we have had a lot of hot economic data. In other words, in the last CPI reading, we had really hot numbers showing that inflation was still high. In the last jobs figures, we had 303,000 new jobs created versus 243 expected. That's a huge beat. In other words, more jobs created. Higher inflation shows that companies are doing well. In fact, the earnings coming from some of the Nasdaq big players this week have been positive as well, showing that the economy is healthy. These are things Jerome Powell needs to think about. Normally, when you're about to cut interest rates, which is what the market is waiting for, you normally have the, mar the economy starting to slow down. And when the economy is slowing down, that is when Jerome Powell is forced into action because he can't break the back of the economy. He needs to cut interest rates. But when he can point to data like this, which is showing that the economy is really hot, it's difficult for him to then go cut interest rates. So you can see now that markets are starting to unwind the probability that we get a rate cut. In June, majority of the markets still expect us to be at 5.25 on the Fed funds rate, so no cut. Or in July, the 31st, they still expect us in the same range, the vast majority. If you go down into September, still, this is the point now. So in September, that's when just, and it's just, just close, right? 40 of the market expects us to still be at 5.25, 44%, the majority expect our rate cut in September. So that's where they expect the rate cut. But that leaves us with very little room to get the anticipated three interest rate cuts before the end of the year. So now the market will have to unwind them. If you go into December, the vast majority of the market expects us only to have had one rate cut by then. So they've had to unwind too. And that is why we're getting some risk off activity in the market, which is no wonder why Bitcoin is consolidating here. So we need to understand this. Jerome Powell can and has the ability and the rationale to maybe want to jawbone the market on Wednesday. In the press conference, he may decide to just be aggressive and allow his words to get the market to tighten. He may say things like, guys, you've seen the data, you've seen the jobs figures, you've seen the inflation, we still got work to do, inflation is rearing its head again, we're still substantially away from our 2% target. Expect him to say those things because he's going to want the market to say, to chill out. They've been running prematurely and he doesn't want this to get out of hand where the market is running green, economy is overheating, and yet inflation is still there. That is a problem, right? So it's very important that we, we monitor that. Now, at the same time, it doesn't mean that the story is completely bleak. We still have data to come out this week. You've got non-farm payrolls on Friday. On Wednesday, just before the FOMC, a couple of hours before, you get your jolts figure, which is your jobs openings in the US. These are data points which Jerome Powell probably has access to before the FOMC meeting, so no doubt it will be uh, used when he's making his decision. Okay, So if any of those figures show that they're softening again or the last reading was just a blip, that's all good then because we want the economy to deliver bad numbers. We need the economy to show, you know, less jobs, less inflation, a bit weaker. That's what we want to see. Very, very important. So when you jump back to here in the charts, that's what we're playing with. You can see Bitcoin dominance here is something I'm paying a lot of close attention to, particularly on the daily chart here. I just want to see what is this trend, right? I called this trend here to the downside and you saw just over a week here of altcoin doing a lot better, but now it's trying to bounce, right? If you were to draw yourself a quick trend line here, it's trying to hold this trend line, right? Bitcoin is trying to bounce from here and hold this trend line, in which case Bitcoin could have a strong period if it attempts to go make a higher high. That said, if this loses the trend lines, then we could see altcoins really benefit from that relatively to Bitcoin.
Okay, so that's what I'm watching for here on the Bitcoin dominance. Also keep an eye on the dollar index. Remember, we want the dollar index to trend to the downside. We need this to have bad days. We need to be able to push it to the downside. But if Jerome Powell comes out hawkish, don't be surprised to see this start climbing. And if it climbs and posts a higher high than this, it's not going to be a great look for Bitcoin. Okay, so ultimately what I'm doing right now is I'm staying the course. I'm being patient. I'm not a, I don't have a crystal ball where I'm like, oh, I know exactly we're going to break up from this pattern and, and, and head in the bullish direction. No, I'm going to be patient. If we break down from the pattern I just shared with you, I'm getting ready for 50K. Mentally, I'm going to prepare myself. Maybe we don't hit it, but I'm going to have my plan in place. What am I doing if Bitcoin falls from where we're at now, 63,000 down towards 50? Where am I nibbling and how much am I nibbling? I've got it written on post-it notes, right? Similarly, if we break out to the upside, I'm taking that trade. There's no way I'm not taking that trade up towards 93,000. Now, if you want to trade all coins with me in the interim, ejazcrypto.com forward slash TG is where I share my all coin trades, how I trade, the TA patterns I use, how I enter it, how I do all my risk management. That's where you're going to want to be if you're an active trader. If you're not, hopefully you found these videos useful anyway. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.